performance was more impressive to me than any cardiovascular surgery he ever could have done. That man has really good connections between the right hemisphere and the rest of his body. All right, I'm going to give you the rules for flourishing in a female body. The one so well articulated by Montel was own your power. Your power to be healthy and to get healthy is far greater than that of any doctor, of any medication, any insurance company, any herb, any vitamin, your own power. And the power begins with your thoughts. Thoughts held long enough become beliefs and thoughts and, and beliefs become biology. Napoleon Hill back in 1925 said, thoughts have the peculiar quality of becoming their physical equivalents. What are your daily thoughts about health? Every thought is accompanied by a biochemical cascade in your body of dopamine, epinephrine, beta endorphin, serotonin, all of the neurochemicals that we give drugs for. They all start with your thoughts. And here's an idea for you. The gut, your gut, produces more neurotransmitters, more chemicals that the brain makes than your brain. So the gut in your brain is actually more accurate. So when you're told something by a doctor that you need a hysterectomy or you need a C-section or you need an induction or you need your uterus removed, get a second opinion. Even if you're told you have cancer and you need surgery right away, get a second opinion. You have time. The gut in your brain is going to tell you that you have time. When you're sitting there in the doctor's office, and a part of you says, this doesn't feel right, but you go along, please remember me here, please remember Montel here, saying, wait a minute, you have time. By the way, I want you to know about your immune system. Everyone's talking about the HPV vaccine, Gardasil, right? 90% mm -hmm. of human papillomavirus in the body is cleared by the body in two years on its own. It goes away on its own, and so do mildly abnormal pap smears. They're, they go away on their own. So number one is own your power. Number two, happiness means not allowing your past wounds to continue creating your current state of health. Robert Holden is a wonderful PhD happiness researcher, and he says, to be happy, one must give up all hope of a different past. But here's the challenge. The past lives in our cells. Every one of us has an inner child, an unhealed inner child who runs our endocrine, immune, and central nervous systems. I want to read you a quote from Alice Miller, a German psychoanalyst. The truth about our childhood is stored up in our bodies and lives in the depths of our souls. Our intellect can be deceived. Our feelings can be numbed and manipulated. Our perceptions <laughs> shamed and confused. Our bodies tricked with medication, but our soul never forgets. And because we are one, one whole soul in one body, someday our body will present its bill. The wounded and lost child is only in hiding. The soul is still whole in spirit, but ultimately our deepest self will accept no compromises or excuses and will not stop tormenting or contaminating us until we stop evading the truth. And that truth keeps coming up. I want to tell you about the famous ACE study that should be studied in every hospital, every medical school, every home in the nation. And here's the ACE study. It is an ongoing collaboration between the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and Kaiser Permanente. Led by co-principal investigators Robert Anda and Vincent Felitti, the ACE study is perhaps the largest scientific research study of its kind, analyzing the relationship between multiple categories of childhood trauma and health and behavioral outcomes later in life. Now, these are the things they studied in 17,000 middle-aged, middle-class adults. Those who had recurrent physical abuse, recurrent emotional abuse, contact sexual abuse, and alcohol or drug abuser in the household, an incarcerated household member, someone who is chronically depressed, 
mentally ill, institutionalized, or suicidal, a mother who's treated violently, one or no parents, or emotional or physical neglect. And what they found was slightly more than half of the people they studied who seemed normal had at least two of those things. And here's what they say. We found that the compulsive use of nicotine, alcohol, injected street drugs, increases proportionally in a strong, graded, dose-response manner that closely parallels the intensity of adverse life experiences during childhood. And it's the same with obesity. This, of course, is at odds with current concepts, including those of biological psychiatry, drug treatment programs, and drug eradication programs. Our findings are disturbing to some because they imply that the basic causes of addiction lie within us and the way we treat each other, not in drug dealers or dangerous chemicals. They suggest that billions of dollars have been spent everywhere except where the answer is to be found. They found this, they began this study in the 80s when they found that the people who were losing weight in their clinics were the most apt to drop out. And one young woman said, overweight is overlooked, and that's exactly what I need to be. She had gained 105 pounds after being raped. When you join the Kaiser program for weight loss, which has enormous success, you're given a mug, and it says, it's hard to get enough of what almost works. So what are you supposed to do? It starts with confiding the truth. And they talk about the amazing experiences that they have where people get over their diabetes and on and on and on. And they said, certainly some of this is due to a reduced disease burden, but we suspect that a significant portion is due to reduced emotional distress in patients who've been helped in supportive settings to speak of the worst secrets of their lives and have been able of, and have emerged feeling that they are still accepted as complete human beings. When someone tells you the worst secret of their life, and by the way, the person telling the secret is usually a four-year-old, not the adult, mm -hmm. and you can love them and accept them right there, the healing process begins. It's been said that addiction is God's answer to community. And so, that's number two. What? We need menopause, you said? Okay, three, I want you to pop, tap the power of community. Community equals immunity. That's what you've been doing here today. There's a study from the University of Pittsburgh that I love. They sprayed cold virus into everyone's nose and throat. And then they studied who got a cold. So they were all equally exposed. And by the way, one of the thoughts I want you to get rid of is, I've been exposed. I've been exposed. I've been exposed. Stop it, okay? Because what they found is that the people who were the least likely to catch cold were the ones who had the most diverse social outlets. A church group, perhaps. A dance group. Um, dancing. Anything of that nature decreased their risk of getting a cold. Now, I want to show you the power of having a supportive community behind you in any endeavor, which is what Do Dr. Oz's entire life is about, and Dr. Wentz at Sonaviv knows the power of community, because when you go to this fabulous hospital, uh, we, all, yes, we all dress in the same uh, cotton scrubs, and everyone eats in the dining room together, whether you're there with cancer or whether you're there to just lose a few pounds. But now I want to show you what the power of community looks like, and this is my mother, Edna's trip to the Everest Base Camp. If you'd show this, please. It was Werner Berger who called me in January, said that he was planning this trip to the Everest Base Camp, and he said, you know, Edna, I know you can do this. And I said, well, you might know Werner, but I'm not so sure at 84 if I can do this. The first part of the hiking, you know, you start at 10,000, and you just keep climbing up and up and up and up. And what I didn't realize is it was 100 miles. That was not in the literature. <laughs> I had two great Sherpas, and each one took my arm, said, come on, Edna, you almost made it. And then when we got up a little closer, there's a whole group of people, and they're all chanting, Edna, Edna. That was wonderful, because 
They all wanted me to make it. I look out there in the morning and take a deep breath and say, wow, what a privilege I've had to live here all these years and enjoy it and have a good family. wisdom, the processes of the female body, your menstrual cycle, menopause, conception, gestation, labor, and birth, or how the divine takes physical form. Breast milk contains specific antibodies to whatever pathogens are in the environment. The, your menstrual cycle follows the phases of the moon. The bill that Alice Miller talks about that comes due, comes due at very specific times because it's your women's wisdom trying to get your attention. It comes due just before your period and during your period. We call it PMS. <laughs> if you don't pay attention, the bill comes due. I call it PMS on steroids, and that would be perimenopause. The reason women gain weight at perimenopause is because weight becomes a protection for the pain and the need for change that they haven't wanted to face. We're more sensitive premenstrually, we're more apt to cry. The two hemispheres of the brain, the right and the left, talk to each other. There are more connections between the right hemisphere and the body than any other place, and your body talks to you premenstrually. So don't make the mistake of saying, is it me or is it my hormones? As though you're here and your hormones are here. Every thought you think changes your hormones. You're more in tune with your intuition premenstrually. The seasonal affective disorder, the autumn of the year, is the PMS time of the year. It's when we go into the dark. And every bit of darkness that you haven't yet processed will come up premenstrually. Did you know that menstrual blood is full of stem cells? It means that precious substance is the best fertilizer for your houseplants you could ever come up with. It supports new life. So my prescription is I want you to begin to celebrate the wisdom of your body at all stages and recognize the privilege, the privilege of being a woman instead of seeing this body as a fundamental problem. So. Nick Kristoff and Cheryl Wudon, two of my hero journalists who wrote Half the Sky said, there's a growing recognition among everyone from the World Bank to the US military's Joint Chiefs of Staff to aid organizations like CARE that focusing on women and girls is the most effective way to fight global poverty and extremism. That's why foreign aid is increasingly directed to women. The world is awakening to a powerful truth Women and girls and the processes of their bodies are not the problem, they're the solution. And that begins with all of you. Now five, finally, embrace the power of your heart. The electromagnetic field of your heart and the signal for the EKG is 500 to 5,000 times higher, stronger than this. Your brain thinks it's running everything. Your heart wins in the end. Your heart wins in the end. And therefore, when you are in cardiac coherence, you get in cardiac coherence when you are in a state of appreciation. When you just look around and have gratitude, write a letter to your second grade teacher, call your mother, any of those things, you will instantly get balance between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems in your body. The heart will have regular beat-to-beat -beat variability and the heart is the master endocrine gland in the body. This begins in the heart and that will help balance your hormones. And secondly, I want you to know, your body is hardwired for pleasure. Nature designed procreation to be joyful, as you know. When the egg and sperm get together, there's a huge burst of a gas called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is produced by the endothelial lining of every blood vessel in your body. And cardiovascular disease begins with damage to the endothelial lining of the blood vessel so that it can no longer produce nitric oxide. 
nitric oxide is the final uh, end stage of how Viagra works. Joy and pleasure are Viagra for the entire body, and they increase uh, circulation throughout the entire body. But health, happiness, and pleasure, and seeking those regularly is a discipline. And what we do to get those quick hits to fight our pain is we go for drugs, alcohol, or food. These are not sustainable pleasures. Health is not going to be changed by fear, power, and pain. It will be changed by the courage to update our past and by the courage to live joyfully. The late Audre Lorde, a black lesbian feminist and the poet laureate of New York State said it best, I had to examine in my dreams as well as in my immune function 